Good afternoon, everyone, or should I say, good crafternoon. Susan Campfield here with SueStampfield.com. Welcome to my stamp room. We got messes. <laughs> We've got creative inspiration. Um, so I love to uh, share and uh, hopefully inspire you. And I get a lot of inspiration by your um by you being here and uh, participating. So welcome, welcome to my channel. Um, this event, this video is special. This is a monthly event. I hope my mic is, oh, I don't know if my mic's plugged in. Hey, hold the phone. Sorry, we can get the sound a little bit better. One moment, please. Got to switch some cordages here. So sorry about that. Thought I was all set. Okay, hopefully, hopefully the sound is a little better now. Welcome everyone. Um, Jennifer, let me know if my sound is okay. Uh, my moderator is here today, Jennifer Walsh. Hey, Jennifer, sound is great. Thank you, Carol. Awesome. Um, welcome to Crafter Noon. So this is a monthly uh, video that I do, and it's tied to a virtual class that I hold. But the video is public and anyone can watch. So welcome. Thanks for hanging out with me today. We're going to do some fun paper crafting. Uh, one of my favorite things to do, sound is good, excellent, um, is, is fun fold cards. And uh, if you go through my video, uh, my videos here on my channel, or you might be over on Facebook. Hey, Facebook friends. Um, you might be my Sue Stampfield Facebook group or my Facebook page, wherever you're joining. Welcome. So glad that you're here. I love fun folds. So Crafter Noon is all about fun fold cards. And uh, every month I design <clears throat> a fun fold card. I usually try to make it something unique that is new to me at least. And um have some creative fun with it. So today I, I'm really excited because this one came all out of my brain. Um, I can even show you where it, <clears throat> somewhere I have a piece of typing paper that's been notes and scratches and 40 million score lines until I found the right one. So, uh, but I love today's card. I'm super excited to share it with you. A uh, shout out to my Sampfield Stars team. These are people who um, decided to purchase the starter kit, most of them to get an awesome discount on their products. And so they became a part of my Stampfield Stars team, which means I'm their, I'm their cheerleader. Um, I'm their their question lady. I help them out whenever they have questions and help them get the best deal they can on their Stampin' Up! products. Um, they helped me name this fold. So they they saw this actually, hmm, it was over a week ago, wasn't it? Um, and they helped me come up with a name. So uh, I think Sandy Stellenberg was the one that um, that coined it. Uh, Carol Rosengren got her right down the right path. So um, so thank you, ladies. Appreciate it so much. And thanks to all my other team members who uh, helped us uh, uh, flesh that out. So that was fun. Um, so we're going to make a card today that I call the Curtain Call Fun Fold card. And the reason I call it that is it's a freestanding card that looks like a stage and then a curtain lifts up for the inside of the card. So super fun, uh, very easy to do, and the creative possibilities are unlimited. So customers who placed an order of $50 or more with me last month got a packet in the mail to make this project. They're going to make uh, the project that I'll be walking you through today, which is made with a joyful flurry bundle and the, snow, the beautiful uh, snowflake vellum. Thank you for your kind words. I appreciate it so much. <clears throat> Lots of snow coming to Colorado mountains. Well, this is going to be perfect then. <laughs> but then I'm going to show you a, a series of other uh, designs that I took this fold and had a lot of fun with. So can't wait to share those. So those of you that purchased last month, you were going to get a tutorial bundle in the email from me. Those of you on my team, you're going to get that tutorial bundle via email from me. And then the tutorial bundle will be available to purchase. And that's available on my blog. So let me show you an important uh, way to find out <laughs> when that becomes available. So if you've never purchased, and I'll, give me a shout out in the comments if you've ever purchased uh, or received one of my tutorial bundles. 
they are very detailed and I'm not kidding. <laughs> I like a detailed tutorial. I like step-by-step -step photos so that I can be very clear on what it is that I'm, I'm doing to make the card look exactly like it does on the tutorial. I like lots of pictures and I print it out and I follow it step-by-step. -step. So, um, if you like that, like I do, you'll be able to purchase the tutorial bundle for all of these cards. And I'll walk you through how to reproduce all of them. And then you can take those measurements, take that inspiration and change it up with other products that you have. And this one just has so many possibilities. So I'm super excited. Oh, thank you. You, you like the tutorials are very complete. Yes, they are <laughs> almost overkill, right? <laughs> Jean says, love your tutorials. Thank you so much. Um, I, I don't leave anything out. I do have some wonderful team members who proofread my tutorials and boy, it's a good thing because sometimes those numbers get a little wonky or just even the wording or whatever. And so they're super, super uh, helpful. Uh, so I appreciate Shirley and Trisha and Jean and Paula. And um, I think that's it that helped me out with the, with the um, proofreading. So super appreciated. Keep the snow. You don't want it. <laughs> We'll keep it in Minnesota. Mm, yeah, maybe, maybe. All right. So um, we're going to play with pretty snow today. That is not cold. Um, all right. So we've got that. So when the tutorial bundle is available, I will do a blog post and I'll have pictures of all of the cards and all the details about how to purchase that bundle. So that's there. Now the that's subscribing to my blog. If you go to my my blog and click on subscribe, you're going to get two options. One is to sub subscribe to the blog. The other is to subscribe to my project sheet emails. Every so often, two, three times a month, I send out an email with um, project sheets in it. These are totally free. These are not purchasable tutorials. These are just free to anyone that subscribes. So if you like ideas, you like having that option of printing it out and having those dimensions, um, you go ahead and, and get that. Uh, what was the one that just went out? Uh, this card was on there, this beautiful step fold card. <laughs> Not sure where my camera is. So uh, this is a full step fold card. So this was in the last one. So just to give you an idea about the project sheets and what is in those. All right. I am tired of talking. Let's start creating. So yay. Um, Mary, you thought you missed the live this week and, and you're happy to see it come up now. Yes. Yeah, so you didn't miss it. I moved it back. Usually we do this event on the 20th. Um, last month we had a wrinkle and we moved it back. This month, I was concerned about the packets arriving on time to the um, the people that qualified for a packet. So I um, I decided to give us two days, and thank goodness I did because uh, two were uh, most of them got there by Thursday, but two were delivered on Thursday, and the last one I saw this morning had been delivered. So we are all good. So I'm glad I kind of backed that up. So. Um, Thank you for being flexible, everyone, on that. All right, let's, you just made three step fold cards for Christmas. Yay, I love the full step fold too. All right, let's go ahead and get this started. Thanks for sharing, Pam. Um, for those of you that are on my YouTube channel, you're also welcome to subscribe to this so that you don't miss any of the future videos or um, uh, uh, Crafternoon <laughs> events. I do also have a playlist here on my channel with all the past Crafternoons. All right, let's flip to, oh, I get so excited, you guys, and I talk too fast. I got to slow down. Bonjour, Vivienne. Okay, so I'm going to, sorry, my French is atrocious, but um, there we go. All right, we are now down at the desktop. Fantastic. So where are we going here? So um, previous, um, okay, yeah, yeah, let's, let's get this party started. Okay, <gasps> so many fun things to share. I have a pile of fun on my desk, on my, my seat here, but we're going to start with our project. So for those of you that received your packet, I do send them in cardboard mailers. I package them very carefully so that um, nothing, um, you know, hopefully doesn't get damaged uh, during the, the trip to you. <laughs> so um, let's go ahead and uh, 
Yeah, and, and it's really fun right now, isn't it, uh, Janine, to get mail that doesn't isn't full of political ads? <laughs> get a little happy mail. So inside the packet, um, there's lots of fun things, and there's some very small pieces in here. So for those of you that have a packet and are making along with me, team members, I emailed you a couple times <laughs> um, the dimensions for this, so you might have pre-cut these and are ready to go. I'm just going to go through uh, the supplies that we're going to use today. Um, we're going to use dimensions. Dimensionals, and I'm like, while I do this, I'm pulling them. Got my glue dots. Let's see, it says dimensionals. I got those. Um, sentiment stamps. I've got those, but I forgot to pull out my ink pad. All right, let's get that. I'm going to go with smoky slate ink here, and I'm using the Joyful Flurry bundle. I'm going to use um, It's a Season of Magic and Wonder, and then Joyful Wishes for my card. Um, this card would also be beautiful with um, silver embossing if you would prefer to do that. So, uh, and then a standard adhesive. I was like, wait, I missed something. <laughs> a standard adhesive of choice. There we go. That's why I was a minute late starting because I all of a sudden went, oh my gosh, my adhesive is downstairs. So I had to go get it. So I'm going to very carefully pull out all these goodies in the packet. Now, there are some differences in some packets. These pieces that are at the back that decided they didn't want to come out of the envelope, those are adhesive sheets. We'll be using those in a moment. I'm going to scoot those aside. Two baby snowflakes, very important. Also scooting aside. I'm really good at losing things on my desk. I don't know about you all, but um, I have my tray here. Perhaps I should, you know what, I'm going to grab a different tray. <laughs> To grab a different tray and I'm just going to contain these because oh my goodness these little paper bits they can just go disappear can't they inside this post-it note don't throw this away this is not just packaging it does have a purpose inside you should have some sequins okay the one I happen to grab has the blue sequins in it some of you have the pretty uh, uh, purple or fresh freesia ones either it, they both look great on this card so got my sequins um, got a banner that's cut here I have some pre-embossed pieces white ones I'm going to set aside now depending on which packet you got it may have uh oh these stuck down hold on hold the phone <laughs> uh, I've got adhesive on these and they stuck to the bottom of my tray. It's okay. It came up. So you might have um, one of these two colors from the silver foil specialty pack. That specialty pack has three different colored of colored silver sheets in it. It has your standard shiny silver. So some of you have that. Uh, which is actually a brushed silver. Some of you have the beautiful um, matte finish uh, lavender um, one, and some of, and yours might be um, debossed, which means the snowflake kind of goes down in, like this one here, or it might be embossed where it's raised up. Doesn't matter. I think most of them are debossed for this card. Either way, it looks awesome. Like seriously, you cannot go wrong with this folder. This is from the wintry embossing folder. Uh, my packet happens to have the beautiful matte uh, lavender uh, color, which it's just kind of a pale purple, I guess it is. It is a um, it is a silver, but it's got a pale purple hue to it. Uh, and the Joyful Flurry bundle, Jennifer is showing us, is on page nineteen in the midi catalog. Thank you, Jennifer. And then we have the gorgeous snowflake vellum. Now this one is hidden in the catalog. So Jennifer, when you get a chance, if you could pop up the um, the number for the snowflake vellum, there is where you can locate that silver foil. It's on page 139 of the annual catalog. And so isn't this gorgeous? I know uh, some, some people don't like this uh, reflection on the screen, but in person, it is so gorgeous. And then the snowflake vellum is really hidden. It's on page 40 in the mini catalog and it's kind of just coming in from the edge. So hard to spot. It comes with flock sheets and it comes with these iridescent ones. For this card, I'm using the iridescents. Um, however, this card would be lovely with the flocked as well. So then we have these iridescent um, kind of little tiny snowflakes, uh, little dots basically on uh, this vellum. 
And then we have our card bases, and that's where we're going to start. So for those of you uh, that are creating along with me, if you want to get, grab your card base, then it's a longer piece to be able to fit it in the packaging. I did start to fold it, but I'm going to unfold it here so that I can show you the base. You know what? I'm actually going to show you. I never showed you the card. I'm going to show you what the card looks like when it's done. Okay. Sometimes that's helpful. Um, for my brain and, and hopefully for yours to see what the finished card looks like. So I kind of jumped in. I got so excited to share. Let's go ahead and look at the card. I'm going to tip my camera up. You can see all my messy bits <laughs> on my desk here. And I'm going to stand the card up because this card does stand for display. Oops, camera's a little low. There we go. It does stand for display. So I'm going to tilt it forward so you can see. It forms what I think of as a stage and that's our card base. And then our insert piece is like the curtain. So the curtain opens up and we've got our message on the inside. So this is why I called it, why we came up with the name Curtain Call. Again, shout out to Sandy Stellenberg for dreaming up that name. I really like it. <laughs> so this is the Curtain Call um, card. Now this one has got the silver on it. It does collapse up to fit into a standard um, uh, envelope size for here in the US. And if you adapted it to the other markets, you would fit in your standard envelope just fine. It is a it's the normal card size when it's all collapsed together. And then here is the one with the lavender, kind of the matte finish um, silver. Again, really, really pretty. Um, show you that up close here, but it stands for display. And then we're also going to pretty it up because when they bring it out of the envelope, we want the oohs and ahs to start right then, right? <laughs> so we're even decorating the outside and uh, somebody could even walk around this card and it would be pretty from almost every side, although I left the back plane. So there is that, but you can put some on the back if you really wanted to. This card is made to be displayed. All right. So back to the how to right <laughs> let's get back to the how to so um yay mary you've got all the supplies awesome so we've got our card base here i am going to grab my scoring tool because this is going to be the easiest way for me to tell you the the scoring because there is a lot of scoring on this one and i don't want to get it wrong <laughs> um jennifer um, as I read these off, let me see, let me hide that. There we go. Jennifer, um, as I read this off, if you could type them up in a comment um, and pop that in, um, I will display that for everyone. Um, I'm not going to be doing that for every dimension on this card, but I will do that for the card base and for that insert piece because those are kind of the main pieces. Everything else will be in the tutorial um, the, the written tutorial bundle, we won't bother with all of that, but this part we will, we will do for you. So this is five and a half inches by 10 and three quarters. So five and a half inches by 10 and three quarters. That's a little normal, a little different than we're used to. Five and a half by 10 and three quarters. I'm going to say it three times. Yes, I am. And then it is scored at three fourths of an inch one and three-fourths of an inch, three and a quarter inches. I'm not actually scoring it because it's already scored, but <clears throat> just walking you through. The next one is seven and a half, then nine inches and 10 inches. Okay, so five and a half by 10 and three quarters, scored at three-fourths, one and three-fourths, three and a quarter, seven and a half, nine and 10. All right. Oh, Jenny's got it all ready to go because she's on my team. So she already got all these in an email. So, and then while we have our scoring tool out here, I'm just going to review this piece. This piece is three inches by 11 and it's scored at five and a half. A little bit simpler, right? 
three by 11 scored at five and a half. And that's what I call the card insert. Now I sent mine through the embossing, uh, <laughs> the die cutting machine and um, die cut this snowflake from the joyful flurry bundle. These are the dies that come with this, the, that coordinate with the stamp sets excuse me, the stamp set. And it does a partial cut, which is really cool. So it adds that kind of fun detail inside your card to just give it that little extra zing, right? That little extra polished look. Um, my last video, we did a card um, with this whole bundle that shows the possibilities with these fun partial snowflakes. So that is your card insert piece. So those are the two main pieces. <clears throat> for the base of the card. But of course, we're gonna decorate it up with all sorts of fun things. All right, so I'm gonna show this. If you want to take a screenshot of this, you're welcome to. This is the card base <clears throat> that Jennifer has for us. And I'm gonna give you about five seconds to do this and then I'll pop up the other one. All right, and then the other one is the insert piece, and that is three by 11. <clears throat> I got a frog in my throat today. Scored at five and a half, so that one's a little bit easier. All right, we're gonna go ahead and hide that so that you can see what I'm doing. All right, awesome. Okay, very good. All right, uh, I think we got that. I'm gonna raise my camera up just a little bit. So we're gonna start with our, I'm gonna grab a bone folder here and we'll try to find one that's not, oh, that one looks pretty nice. <laughs> Most of mine have like ink on them, things are rubbed off, they're all dirty, but they work, right? So they get a lot of love, a lot of use. So um, we're gonna start with actually creasing on the two score lines that are on the interior of the card, if that makes sense. The two that are closest to the, the center, okay? So I'm gonna start with, um, I'm trying to remember in the tutorial which side I started with, I can't remember. Maybe it says here, hang on, nope. I only printed the one sheet out. We'll start, I'll start with the right. In the tutorial, I might start with the left. Doesn't matter, they're exactly the same. So you've got that crease down. Now we're gonna fold backwards. Uh, I'm gonna hold this up so you can hopefully see that next score line. I'm going to fold backwards on that score line and give it a good crease. The more you crease this, the flatter it lays. Of course, I've already gotten something on my paper. Goodness. Goodness me. Get that off of there. Okay. And now we have another score right here. This one is going to go back the other way. So we're doing a little bit of accordion folding on those two score lines, okay? Let me recap that. That first one went down, the next or forward, the next one went backward, and the last one went forward again. And then you wanna give it a good crease. The more you crease it, the flatter, of course, it, it lays. So it should look like this when you're done. All right. And then we're gonna open this back up. Well, we don't have to, but I'm just gonna get it out of the way basically. I'm gonna fold this on the, that uh, score that we already folded, and then I do the same exact thing. I'm gonna fold backwards on the, the next score line, give it a nice crease, fold forward on the last score line. This forms that stage that stands up. Do you see how that? Uh, stands for display and it just it sits really nice because we've got that um, we've got those uh, accordion pleats in there that give it a nice um, steady base cameras not over the top of it there we go <laughs> so that's our card base or our stage as it is now let's do the curtain or the card insert so super easy. Um, those of you that got the packet, it's already folded for you because I had to get it in the envelope. <laughs> but those of you that are doing this at home, um, you're going to go ahead and uh, just crease on that center score line. Easy peasy, right? Give it a good, a good uh, rub with your bone folder. And make sure for those of you that um, have the packet that have this already cut, make sure the pre-cut uh, snowflake is on the inside of the card, okay? And we're gonna be adhering this piece to our panel. Now, depending on your packets, um, 
there is, it's possible that there might be a little bit of white that hangs over. If that's the case, you can trim it. Um, this one seems to be perfect. So uh, it, you know, it just depends. Our white is a little bit, can be like a 16th of an inch longer sometimes. And um, so that can kind of set things off. I'm going to grab my adhesive, um, grab your adhesive of choice. We're going to put adhesive on the back of this, but we are not going to put any on the cut portions of the snowflake because I like how those uh, those are meant to pop out a little bit to add some dimension. So I'm going to a little bit here, a little bit here, maybe a little bit there. Um, if you're nervous about it, you could even put a glue dot or something. Uh, but that's going to just uh, make sure that that snowflake is um, available or loose and free and can can uh, pop up a little bit. So I'm going to add a little bit here, a little bit here. I don't really need any in there. All right, so I've got that. Put some in here. Add a little bit in that upper right upper corner there. And then you just want to center it between those two score lines so that that, um, that crease or fold is at the top of the card. All right, and then give that a rub. So now we have our stage set. We can raise the curtain and have our inside message or decoration or whatever it is we want to show off. The recipient can put it out for display and show off your beautiful artwork. So there are the basics of the curtain call card. Um, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the details. Oh, thank you, Judy, you're so sweet. Um, all right, so let's move on. We're gonna start with our beautiful snowflakes that are gonna go on the front. Now, there are actually two different patterns of snowflakes in the pack. Um, some have these little dots in the background. Others are just snowflakes. They're very similar. You maybe can't even tell the difference. Um, so your, yours might look slightly different than this, but very, very similar. And to be able to have enough, I use them all first. So some packets had one, some had the other. We're going to grab our adhesive sheets. Adhesive sheets work amazing for attaching vellum without any adhesive showing. If I used my seal on this and you looked at the card, you'd be able to see the edges of the seal through the vellum. If that doesn't bother you, that's totally fine. It it bugs me. <laughs> I want I want it to disappear. So um, in the tutorial, I tell you, um, I give you steps about how to cut these adhesive sheets, my recommendation um, to make them as easy to use as possible. The other uh, use for adhesive sheets is um, to put them on cardstock and then die cut so that when you die cut the, the de delicate detailed piece, you can peel off the backing and it's already sticky. So um, I cut these a certain way so that the backing would be very easy to remove. So there should be on your um, adhesive piece, uh, two different, what do I wanna call those? Separations of the backing. So we're gonna just, I like to do them, you could take them all off, but when I do that, I get sticky all over me. So I like to just do it in pieces, just like so. And then now I peel this back and remove that second piece push that down and remove the last piece. Now this has double siding on it, so we'll be removing that backing in a little bit, but we're gonna go ahead and get the other one on. I'm gonna do exactly the same procedure where I remove a portion of the backing. And again, I'm using that, that break in the, in the backing paper. So I put that first one down, peel it back, get the next one off. Again, you can take them all off um, at first if you are neater than I am. <laughs> I end up getting sticky all over me when I do that. So, and then we're gonna peel off this last piece. It is very sticky stuff. All right, so I've got these two strips on. That is plenty to hold this piece in place. Um, getting little bits everywhere, that's okay. Now we're gonna peel off the backing. So I'm gonna press down to make sure it's it's uh, stuck down and on all the adhesive is gonna stay. And then I'm gonna peel up the backing and you can see the shiny, the, the sticky part staying behind. Now sometimes you'll get, I don't know if my camera will focus on that. Sometimes, let me turn it, you'll get some strings coming up. If it's just a few, it's not a big deal. If it's big chunks of adhesive, um, just press the backing back into the sticky part 
and it will it will generally stick back onto the sticky bits and this is just from usually from uh, being cut all right we got our last piece off i'm going to chuck that in the bin or close to the bin <laughs> i'll do a little cleanup after we're done here today um, and now i'm going to repeat that with this side and now we have uh, two very sticky strips on our paper and I'm going to go to my card here and pop that on. Now you do want to be careful because once this is down, it's not coming up. I'm going to pull it closer towards me. I apologize if I'm slightly, I know I'm not centered on the camera, but I need to be able to see. <laughs> I'm sure you understand. All right. And then let it down so that we're mostly centered. And there we have our pretty vellum in place. We have two more pieces of vellum. We're going to repeat those, uh, that same technique with these two skinnier strips of adhesive sheets. Again, all the specific dimensions for these are in the tutorial bundle. Um, let's see if I can remember. <laughs> I believe the vellum is two and three quarters by five and a quarter and you don't need to type this part up Jennifer but I believe it's two and three quarters by five and a quarter and then this one is um I love cheat and luck hang on I got it over here somewhere uh three fourths of an inch by five and a quarter I have flipped this over no I didn't okay oops almost messed, messed up there flip it over so that you're on the back side so you don't see the pretty shiny anymore it almost looks like just silver dots now and then we're gonna I peeled off this first little backing piece here so just like the other one I'm gonna peel it off stick it on peel the next one off and the last one. Ooh, got really close to the end there. I started a little bit too far down, didn't I? But it made it. <laughs> All right, where is the backing on this one? All right, this might be one. Uh, I'm not finding the backing seam. Oh, there it is. I just am not looking hard enough. So usually if you bend it, you will find it. It is there. I almost gave up. All right. So I'm going to do the same method here. I'm going to start a little higher up on this one. Take that piece off. If you can tell you're running off, you could always trim it off before you uh, remove that last piece. But make sure you're using sticker uh, scissors that you don't mind if they get a little bit sticky. All right. Yeah, it works really good, Clara. All right. So we've got our, um, our other pieces. These are going to go right here on these panels. These panels are an inch and this is three fourths of an inch. So it's going to be perfect for that. Again, and pull that backing piece off and try and center this. Hopefully I'm still on camera. I think I am like so all right there we go and then we'll do the same over here i know you can't even see it right jennifer it's like magic it's so magic <laughs> magical so it is sticky but it does the job invisible stickiness love it because this vellum is so gorgeous. And again, this would be just as pretty with the flocking in these, uh, the flock snowflakes and the flocked polka dots, super cute. All right, so we've got the sticky stuff done. Let's grab our embossed panels and our, um, and our silver panels, okay? So I'm gonna pop these in here. These are gonna go in these two spots and let's go ahead and grab some adhesive. I'm using seal. Use whatever you like. If you want to use um, liquid glue or whatever you prefer. And then we're going to pop these on. 
All right, so pretty. And then let's put it here. Again, you could use the shiny silver. There's even one that's like a charcoal, um, really textured silver in this pack that also wouldn't be a bad choice. All right, so there we have our um, inside of our card is coming along really great. We're gonna go ahead and do the outside of our card. All right, and I just thought I had to something and I made myself nervous and I'm getting distracted. <laughs> I'll tell you in a minute. It has to do with stamping the cinnamon. I usually stamp it ahead of time because I get a little nervous on craft noon and um, mess up. All right, so on the outside of the card, the exterior part, this first uh, panel, that's where this embossed one goes. This, of course, is optional. This decoration is going to be viewed when it's pulled out of the envelope. And um, if somebody looks at the side of the card when it's on display, um, you can go ahead and put the one on the other side or you can go ahead and pop on this skinny one here, whichever you prefer. Probably should have done the, both big pieces, but it seems like I've got this, this side down and flat. I might as well stick them both on, right? When I write the tutorials for these, I make the whole card again and I take photos of every step. And then I write descriptions and of course have all of the dimensions and everything just so that it is um, reproducible. And that one is from the get go with the die cutting and the embossing. And um, you know, not all of the things already done like are on this. This one is already par partially ready to go. Okay, I've got my other side now. We're gonna put this embossed panel in this area here. And our skinny one is going to go right here. Oh, I can hardly wait to show you the other cards, you guys. I had so much fun and I did a little changing it up and it, it, I just love taking one fold and doing it a whole bunch of different ways. That just brings me joy. Instead of learning a whole bunch of different folds, why not <laughs> maximize, right? All right. So at this point, we should be looking just like this. This is the card when closed and then opened up for display. So we've got all our fun decorations on there. You can see the possibilities on this fold with designer papers, embossed things, um, you know, all sorts of options, pretty specialty papers like this one and this one. Um, so now we're going to decorate our, uh, our front of our card. So uh, for those of you with the packets, you should have a few things remaining. One of them is a label. This fun um, offset label is from the Joyful Flurry bundle. Where are those dies at? Hmm. Well, probably downstairs where I was cutting a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> oh, look, we've got a little a little holly leaf that's joined the fun. Uh, away you go. Away, away. All right. So um, I, anyway, this, this one comes with uh, two different sizes of these offset dies. And I'm going to stamp this. So we're going to take the stamps. We're going to take the smoky slate ink and we're going to attempt. <laughs> Susan is going to attempt to stamp um, a non photopolymer stamp on a pre cut label and hope for the best. Hope for semi straightness, everyone. Fingers crossed. Usually I would actually stamp it first and then die cut it, but. Um, those of you that are making this at home, if you have the set, this is what you'll be doing. If you don't have the set, you can certainly substitute any greeting of choice. I'm using It's a Season of Magic and Wonder. Okay, you guys, I have to pull it closer to me. <gasps> oh my gosh, this is nerve wracking, right? This is like, oh, oh, so scary. I'm afraid to look. <gasps> oh my gosh. Nailed it. Whew. All right. That's stressful. <laughs> All right. So we've got our, it's a season of magic and wonder. And then on the inside of the card, I'm going to put joyful wishes. Now, just a little shout out to a couple other fun sentiments in here. That would be great with this card. Let it snow would be absolutely beautiful. There's a little label that that fits. In fact, I have one floating around here somewhere because I, um, I really liked that. 
and almost use that. Also, if you miss out on Christmas and hey, you know, life gets busy, right? Um, sending all the best this new year, you can send out New Year's cards. It's totally fine. Totally fine. It's just getting those cards in the mail and sending them whenever you do it, right? Always appreciated. So I'm going to open up my insert. I'm going to lay it flat and I'm going to stamp the words joyful wishes on the inside of my card. Now the fun begins. <laughs> We're going to do a little decorating. That's my favorite part. I'm going to go ahead and put my smoky slate pad away because why not? So um, those of you that are putting your card together, you've got your label and you've got your two small snowflakes and you've got some sequins left. So let's put those into play. Now, again, you might have the lavender sequins. You might have the blue sequins either look nice. You might have the, the silver shiny snowflakes. You might have the, um, the lavender matte ones. Again, all look good, right? Okay, this is where we're going to want some dimensionals and glue dots. We're going to start with... Um, we're going to do a little mapping here, okay? So depending on your pattern of vellum and what ended up in your package or when you cut it apart, how it ends up on your paper, you need to do a little planning on where you want to put these snowflakes because everyone's um, labels might end up in different spots. So we're going to attach the snowflakes uh, with a glue dot to two other snowflakes on our vellum and then we're going to attach the label with dimensionals okay and again it might vary on where you put that so for instance on this card i could put a little snowflake up here i could put one down here and i could put my sentiment more in the center right hold that up so you can see i know it's super reflective and hard to see or i could do um one up here, one here, and put my sentiment down here. It doesn't matter. Um, I just want to make sure you don't stick your snowflakes on and then go, oh, well, where's this going to go, right? So um, so you just need to have a game plan. Um, I'm going to put mine near the bottom just because that's how my other two, well, no, I'm not. Nope, nope, I'm changing my mind. My other two look like that. Let's make this one a little different. But if you fall in love with a little snowflake like this one and you don't want to cover it up, you have options. That's all I'm trying to say, right? So cannot wait to share the other samples with you. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to our glue dots. These snowflakes are tiny. So I'm going to take the glue dot and kind of fold it in half and put it on the back of my snowflake here. There are lots of distractions going on right now in our house. We have a a new cedar fence that went up in August and um, <clears throat> we're in the process of staining it ourselves. It's a 3,000 square feet of fence. <laughs> this is massively huge. And so, um, yeah, that's what I'll be doing when I'm done here. All right, so I've got the other glue dot mushed on there. So I'm hearing noises going on and I'm just trying to ignore them because I'm, I'm in my happy place right now. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to glue dot that little snowflake on there. So I've got the two snowflakes added. Now I'm going to put a couple dimensionals on the back of my label. And remember, there's no, you know, wrong place. You just kind of want a game plan of where these things are going to go. It's going to look awesome no matter where it goes. So this one I'm putting more in the center. Center, Susan, come on, center. All right, there we go. So I'm matching up the point on the inset corner with the edge of my vellum and the other one lines up perfectly. So this must be uh, two and three quarters right here. Um, and it does stick off a little bit with the beauty of this card does that does not matter. You just want to make sure it's not whatever you put in there is not wider than than your stage, the inside interior part of your stage. All right, so next up and you can see on this one, it was lower. This one I wanted this snowflake to show so it was even lower still. They all look nice, right? All look good. All right. So we're going to, wonderful that you can do home repairs yourself. Well, we'll see, Joan. <laughs> we will see. I did get a quote from a company and it was astronomical. And so we're trying to do it ourselves. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see how it comes out. All right. So grab a sequin. I'm using my take your pick tool. And I'm going to pop one of the sequins on one of the snowflakes. You want to push it, smush it, 
press it because you don't want this popping off um, as they are prone to do. I've been having, um, if I don't press on the sequins, I do have that issue. Um, if you really, really want to make sure, you could put a blob of glue on there. Um, they do have a glue dot on them, but you really need to make sure that glue dot is activated by pressing. Okay, so I've got those two popped on. We've got one more, and that one goes on the inside of our card. Again, yours might be the fresh freesia color. They might be the blue. Uh, doesn't matter. Here's, uh, I've got my inside of my snowflake. Again, if you want to lift up those edges of your snowflake, a little bit more you can certainly do that so cute and then here's what the fresh freesia ones look like it's almost hard to see with these here i'll, I'll zoom in <laughs> with the sparkly vellum there um, let's open up this one you can see it a little better there so regardless of the color they all look great and that is our card so I hope you're ready to see some more curtain call fun fold cards. I'll just say it carefully. There's a lot of C's involved. Let me clean up my desk here and we'll look at some more. All right. So there we go. Let's go. Uh, the take your pick tool, which is super, whoopsie. Um, I lost it. Hang on. Uh, take your pick tool is on page 155. Thank you, Jennifer. All right. So, so, so fun. Oh, this would be pretty for a December wedding. Oh, beautiful. So many uh, possibilities. So we're going to look at some more uh, cards that I have created that are going to be part of the tutorial bundle. Let me just clear some space. All right. Oh, where to start? Um. Okay, we have... Oh, I don't know where to start. Okay, I'm going to start here. I'm going to start here. So we have um, a sneak peek of a bundle that's coming. This is how the card would look out coming out of the envelope. And it opens up like this. I went with a lot of white space on this. I wanted to put embellishments on here so bad, but I pulled myself back. You absolutely could if you wanted to, but I left this gorgeous card with uh, with nothing but die cuts and embossing for the decorating, which it, it's lovely. And then inside it um, says wishes for a beautiful birthday. We have a little stamping at the bottom. So this one is with the Fitting Florets Bundle. The Fitting Florets Bundle is available right now um, for demonstrators to pre-order. Or if you decide you want to give it a try to be a demonstrator, um, you can, and you don't have to do videos like I do. You can just be a discount shopper. <laughs> um, you can put this in your starter kit right now. And there's also a, a really good special on the starter kit. So that's what it looks like um, displayed. Uh, customers can purchase this bundle starting next month. So I had so much fun with that one <laughs> that I did another card. This is the Fitting Florets Designer Series paper and um, a stamp set that is also part of that. Um, it's called Framed and Festive. And so this will be available to purchase. The stamp set will be available to purchase next month. Or again, um, you can get it right now in the starter kit and um, or if you're a demonstrator. So let me... Let me bring it up closer and then let's open up the curtain on this one. And inside the curtain, we've got some Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas and a little bit more of that designer paper. There we go. And on the front here, I don't know if you can see it. I'll bring it in. Let's see, maybe I should zoom. As soon as I come in too close, it'll get blurry. Um, right here, we have these uh, swirls. Those are part of that collection as well. You can get the whole collection with the two different stamp sets, the paper, the dies, the oval dies, um, and the embellishments, um, or you can get bits and pieces. So, so those are two with the uh, flitting, fitting florets collection. Um, and let's see, <gasps> what else can I show? Okay, <laughs> so this next one is um, with the Nature's Prince bundle and the Sun Prince Designer Series paper. This one is um, gray granite. Uh, that paper, if you may recall, has, um, let's see, we've done this one in some of the past, um, why is my camera crooked? What the heck? Okay, there we go. Um, in some of the past Crafternoons, we had a lot of fun with this bundle. Um, 
because it has some pretty, this is the floating panels uh, card. By the way, all of these tutorials are available on my blog. Uh, we now have 10 crafternoons, 10 amazing fun folds for you to pick from. This is the floating panels card um, that was part of crafternoon. And this is with the blues in that paper. This particular one is with the gray granites in that same paper. So they have both colors. And um, this one I think would be, I left the inside blank because I think you could use this card. I don't know, give me a shout out in the comments on what you would use this card for. I decided to go with you're on my mind on the front, which is right from that same bundle, the Nature's Prints. Um, the die comes in with that as well that cuts that label. And I think this would make a gorgeous uh, wedding card. It would make a beautiful um, sympathy card. It would make a beautiful Thanksgiving card. There's kind of a little bit of a fall feel to it with the, the brownish gray to, to my mind. Um, so many possibilities on this one. Um, so how would you send this card? A sympathy card? Yeah, it would make a beautiful sympathy card, wouldn't it? So this is, again, our curtain is raising up and then we'll have our sentiment of choice there. And then I used uh, the same stamp here and here on the inside. So that's that one. I hope this is... I can't quite see what I'm doing here when I have it tilted this way, but hopefully that showed up. Then I decided um, to do this one. I'll show you what it looks like closed and let's stand it up here. So this one is with the um, Santa Express Designer Series paper, which is back in stock now. I don't know why I have this cord here. It's really in it's affecting my aesthetics. <laughs> um, this one, I decided to make a gift card holder. So our curtain raises up on, on the inside. We have a little pocket. So let's see if I can back up a little bit more. You can see the inside sentiment there at the top. And we have a little pocket with a gift card on the inside of the card. So this one is more of a gift um, that could also then be used for a holiday direct, uh, decoration because of course it stands for display just like all of the other ones. So, um, oh, I'm sorry, my camera is shaking so much. So I don't know, I give a lot of gift cards during the holidays and I, I kind of feel like I'm cheating a little bit. So I like to make a nice looking holder. And so this uh, particular layout works really, really well for that. And um, you can use any designer series paper. I use the Christmas banner uh, dies and stamp set to um, decorate this particular one and the Santa Express designer paper. This one, I left the two panels um, on the front um, blank actually. So, all right, I've got one more to show. <laughs> this one I really took some creative license on. I wanted a Thanksgiving card. So, um, and I wanted to use my favorite uh, dies, which are the gnomes. So we have our little gnome here and he is dressed up as a pilgrim. And he is a dancing gnome. Um, he wouldn't have to be if you didn't want to mess with that. You could absolutely have him just glued down. He's still adorable. Um, but he does dance. And so our, our gnomes have gotten a little crazy here at Thanksgiving and they've decorated, they've, they've gotten into costume um, and including our interior gnome. So let's raise the curtain on the stage here. And inside we have our turkey gnome. <laughs> He's also a dancing gnome, but again, he wouldn't, he certainly wouldn't have to be, uh, but he has a turkey hat on. So those are our little... <laughs> Are, it's a little bit of fun for the Thanksgiving holiday. Um, now, the one drawback to making your gnome uh, dancing on the front, you see what happened. He stood on his head when I opened the card <laughs> and his uh, feet are he stand, doing a handstand there um, when you open the card. So um, you could certainly have this one not be dancing and just have the turkey gnome dancing or vice versa. So uh, just had to have a little bit of fun. I do love punch art where you take little bits of pieces um, and uh, put them together to build creative things. And so um, I had a lot of fun with this one. And um, You Are Such a Blessing is actually from the um, Harvest. Oh, come on, Susan. I'm looking on my shelf because 
I might have put it away. Hello Harvest. That's the name of the stamp set, which is the dies that match a, or where the, the uh, pumpkin came from. And uh, I did, uh, again, I will have step by step on the tutorial on how you make your pilgrim hat and how you make your turkey hat in case you want to dress up your gnomes for Thanksgiving. You could certainly do this um, even to display at Thanksgiving um, on your Thanksgiving table. This could even be your centerpiece. Um, and uh, super fun. Now you can see on this particular version of the curtain call card, I made my stage, my stage is the same size, but I made my curtain wider to accommodate um, my uh, pilgrim and the pumpkin. You can see he's doing a handstand there again um, on the, the, um, <laughs> the front because I flipped the inside. All right, so that, uh, those are, let's bring this back up. Let's bring this back down. So these are the cards that will be in the tutorial bundle. Um, it does take me about a day to do every tutorial or to do one tutorial takes me about a day. So uh, it will take me a little bit of time to make this available. The best way to get notification when it is available is to subscribe uh, to my blog, which is right here. And while you're waiting for that to, to arrive, you might want to subscribe to my free project sheet so you can get some more fun project sheets to be doing uh, while you're waiting. So when you uh, subscribe to the project sheets, you're going to get a welcome letter that has um, some project sheets right from the get-go. So, and again, these do fit in a normal envelope. Um, to get them in, um, because of all the accordion folding, you might want to just take a... Um, a piece of printer paper and actually just a half sheet and fold it over it just to make it easier to slip into the envelope. I didn't have too much trouble when I put it in, but but that would make it even easier if you're doing all your Christmas cards with this fold. So I'm going to flip my camera here. Where is that? Where is that? There it is. <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed our new fun fold. What is the DSP on the Thanksgiving gnome card? That is the uh, He's the Man designer series paper. It's the masculine paper from the annual catalog. There's actually two uh, patterns in there that are perfect for um, the fall holidays and Thanksgiving and browns and rust colors. So thank you so much. I'm just checking to see. Oh, Jennifer was on it. He's the man paper. There it is. Page 78. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you for moderating today. Thank you all for hanging out with me uh, during our crafter noon event. Um, looking forward to seeing you in the next video. If you hit subscribe to my on my YouTube channel and turn on notifications, you'll get notified the next time I go live. If you're over on Facebook, um, if you like my page, you will uh, I'll, and turn on notifications, you'll also get notified and then we can craft again. Looking forward to it. Thank you all for being here today. And uh, thanks to my team members. I hope you had fun with our project. Uh, remember, you get the tutorial bundle for free, so don't buy it. And then um, I'll have to refund you if you do. And then uh, customers who placed a qualifying order, um, you're going to get that tutorial bundle for free. I would love to have you participate with a packet next month. Anyone who's watching, place an order um, on my website. You can go to suestampfield.com, click on shop now, place an order for $50 or above. You do have to be in the U.S. I can only take orders in the U.S. You don't need a... Um, you don't need a host code, nothing like that. If you place an order, $50 or more before tax and shipping, you're in. <laughs> I just print out the list of anyone that placed an order of that amount for the month prior. So people who are ordering right now will be getting the November Crafternoon Fun Fold packet in the mail next month. Take care, everyone. Have a wonderful Halloween. And we kind of skipped over that one because we covered that last month, didn't we? Um, have a wonderful Halloween. And... Uh, I will see you all very soon right here on Sue Stampfield uh, YouTube channel or over on Facebook on my Facebook page or in my Sue Stampfield Facebook group. Thanks for being here, everyone. Have a great night. Bye-bye.